Welcome back YouTubers, this is Omar from Near Mint Condition and today I'm going to show you my haul for April of 2018. So, please stay tuned. So, let's start off with some independent stuff that I picked up. I picked up the rest of the mouse guard that I was missing and I used my additional 4% off at Instock Trades using the Omni Bros Live discount code that we got for a week, so that was really cool. Because they hardly give any additional discount to any of these independent books. And if you don't know what Mouse Guard is, think of Redwall and stories like that. Little Mice with Swords. It's done by David Peterson, but it's been on hiatus for like five years. So they've been pump putting out these Legends of the Mouse Guard books. There's three volumes and there's even a box set available. And it just focuses on other artists and their take on the characters and the world of Redwall. I said Redwall, see? I meant Mouse Guard. And then this really, really thin Baldwin the Brave and other tales from the world of Mouse Guard. Just to show you some of the art. Come on, how can you turn down mice with swords and axes? That's just too cute. Anyway, so hopefully the book will come back from hiatus this year, along with Stuff of Legend. I'm really, really hoping those books come back. On a whim, I bought The Lost Path. Um, this is by Emil Fletchias. It's a story of three kids. They go out into the woods and they run into spirits and forest spirits. The art is really cool because it shifts back between black and white and color, as you can see. Uh, it reminds me of a little bit of the artwork from the manga Black and White. And, I don't know, kind of a, maybe, maybe some Disney influence here. It's not that dark of a story, but the art is what really, really got me. So that's why I ended up buying it. Some panels are really detailed. The creatures are pretty detailed. Uh, the story itself, eh, it was okay. Maybe I was expecting a lot more. Or maybe it's just smarter than I am. That could be the problem. Can't believe I didn't own this already from Hell by Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell. This is the story that the movie is based on. And I have never read this. This is one of the few Alan Moore works I've never read. Most of his stuff like League or Watchmen, of course. Stuff like that that's just become essential. But for some reason I didn't know this and I've never read it. So hopefully it's as good. Well, the movie was okay. I hope it's better than the movie. I'm digging the artwork so far. Next up by Image is Nameless by Grant Morrison. And I really like uh, Chris Burnham's artwork. He was the guy that did a lot of the Batman Incorporated stuff with Grant Morrison. So that's what got me to get this. No idea what this is about, so I don't want to flip too much through here. He's got a very Frank Quietly kind of look to his artwork. You can probably see from that panel. So I'm pretty hyped to read this. But it's Grant Morrison, so I know I'll probably end up liking it. Let's see, in the back here, looks like some uncolored artwork with some of the script, probably, and the original art. So let's read that. There's another book I picked up from Jeff Lemire. This is somebody whose art I really am not a huge fan of. But I really, really like his stories. I wasn't that big of a fan of the Sweet Tooth artwork. And I really honestly never got used to it after three volumes. So I figured it's just one of those things. Uh, oh, well, I just have to bypass the artwork and get used to it. And just enjoy the story for what it is. No idea what this is about. But like I said, big fan of Jeff Lemire. So excited to read this. And last but not least on the independent books, I ended up picking up Four Kids Walking to a Bank because of what my co-host Jess, Omnidog, was selling it to me so much, and also Peter M. from Crushing Crisis was hyping this book up. Stories written by Matthew Rosenberg, and the artwork is by Tyler Boss. And it's the story of four kids that are kind of big nerds. Uh, sometime in the 80s, playing Dungeons and Dragons, playing video games, and all of a sudden this group of guys walk into their house, and they're looking for the lead character's dad. And because... Apparently, they used to do a lot of heists together when he was younger, and they need his help to rob a bank. So it's up to the kids to make a pact to stop them from doing that by any means necessary. So halfway through it, really, really enjoyed it. 
so far, so I'm excited to see what happens. I'm kind of worried for the kids, but this was good. I'm surprised this didn't come out on hardcover. Right now, it's just available in trade paperback. All right, let's look at some DC Rebirth hardcovers. Here is Flash, containing the crossover with Batman, I think. This is the button crossover. Yeah, that's the cover. So I know they had a hardcover of that, but you don't need it if you're gonna get both the Batman Deluxe Edition and the Flash Deluxe Edition. And here is a look at the inside without the dust jacket. Let's look at some of the inside artwork. Really enjoyed the first volume, so excited to read this one. And I've already read the button crossover with Tom King's Batman and it was pretty solid. I'm just flipping through here, looking at the art. Wally. Looks like more of the same good stuff that was in volume one. So cool. What I'm not looking forward to reading, and because I'm weak, I went ahead and bought Justice League Volume 2 hardcover. Because I'm a completist. This is what the inside dust jacket looks like. I have no idea what the hell that is. This is the story by Brian Hitch. They don't even have Tony Daniel on art anymore. I think it's Fernando Das Pasadan. Pasadan? Uh, that art doesn't look terrible. Yeah, the, the story is pretty atrocious, at least from the first volume. Um, but I'm a completist, so uh, uh, I have to get things like these. Well, no, I don't have to. I'm just an idiot. There. So maybe somebody else out there in the comments can tell me, hey, don't feel too bad. I also bought it as well. Oh, Brian Hitch. Well, there's a little saving grace. Brian Hitch actually draws some of the issues. Uh, so there's that. Moving on to another hardcover. For some reason, I did not talk about Ape Sapien Volume 2, even though it was in my haul video last month. So let's look a little bit through here. Inside of what the dust jacket looks like. I believe this collects the Volumes 5 through 7, if I'm not mistaken, of Ape Sapien. Or six, oh, let's see. Uh, six through eight, yeah. So I think the next volume will collect the earlier volumes one and two with some P BPRD stuff, if I'm not mistaken. Here's some of the inside artwork. I've read volume one, I really liked it. So this looks like the same creative team behind this. So it's gotta be some more of the good stuff in here. And just a little more of the artwork and dark horse they know how to build these books now the hardcover the x-men legion quest i'm gonna do a separate video about this so not gonna talk about this let's move on to trade paperbacks avengers academy volume 2 wrapping up the avengers academy run probably one of the most underrated books i've read in a long time i love these characters and i hated to see what happened to them in avengers underground um the Battle Royale book, Avengers, what was it called? I guess that book left such a bad taste in my mouth, I can't remember what it was called. Avengers something. It was before Underground. Anyway, where some of these characters ended up not having a good, happy ending. But yeah, I love what Christos Gage did. Excited to see him kind of co-write some of the Spider-Man stuff, and hopefully he'll be doing another flagship book like X-Men or Avengers sometime, because the guy can really write some damn good characters. Now, if you're a fan of Annihilation, or Annihilation Conquest, or War of the Kings, or any of the Cosmic Saga that was written by Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning at Marvel for seven years, you've got to pick up Legion. Because Volume 1 has been out for about a month, and it's picked it up. Volume 2 comes out, I believe, this month in May. It's not, I'm not going to say it's as epic as their, of course... Marvel stuff, mainly because I'm not that familiar with the Legion of Superheroes, but it was a great story. I really, really liked what they did with the characters, especially since I wasn't familiar with them. And if that doesn't sell you, it's got some of the earliest artwork by Oliver Copiel, who is now one of the biggest artists at Marvel and DC. Speaking of big names on a big title, Mark Wade and The Flash, Volume 4. Keep them coming. I think there should be a total of eight of these, if I'm not mistaken. About one or two more volumes to complete his ongoing run, and then when he took a break, and then Mark Millar and Grant Morrison took over, and he came back with another writer. So, as long as DC keeps publishing them, I'm going to keep buying them. It's got some stuff by Carlos Pacheco, Salvador La Roca, and Mike Wieringo. Some early artwork by them. 
if I'm not mistaken, this does collect the terminal velocity crossover that leads up to issue 100. DC was trying to cash in on their 100th issues of Wonder Woman and Green Arrow and Flash, so something huge had to happen in that issue. And Mark Wade knocked it out of the park. All I have to say about these books right here, it's about damn time. Batman the Dark Knight Detective Volume 1. This collects a lot of the older Batman stuff, pretty much post-Crisis on Infinite Earths, and there is a sister title called Batman the Cape Crusader. So this collects a lot of the Barr and Alan Davis run, with the exception of, of course, Year 2, which has been released as an oversized hardcover. And trade paperbacks many times, so if you have that, it's not included in this, just as a heads up. But you get Alan Davis, and you get Batman, and early Batman stories, post-Crisis on Infinite Earths, I think it's great. And I hope they keep going with them. I think Volume 2s have already been solicited, so that's a good sign. Well, I can't say it's a great sign because it is DC and they have a habit of canceling books on you. And Marvel keeps surprising me with these Cable books. This is Cable Revolution. Um, Robert Weinberg, the late Robert Weinberg, wrote some of these stories. Um, this is kind of when Cable separated himself from the X-Men and he was slowly starting to come back. Probably mandated by editors. And there was a crossover here with Dreams End, and it was a pretty good crossover. I kind of enjoyed it. But yeah, it was pretty cool to kind of see uh, the return of Rachel Summers, who we hadn't seen in a long time before this. She just kind of fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, this is the crossover right here. This is by Matthew Ryan. This is the Dreams End crossover where Pyro dies and Senator Kelly dies. So he kind of comes back to the X-Men after the apocalypse ages where he's he's got his dad's visor because at this time Cyclops was dead. But I really enjoyed this run and this kind of precedes the hardcover that comes out here in a few months, I believe in October, collecting the Soldier X stuff and the remaining Cable. So pretty soon we'll have most of Cable in collected editions. I think just... The exception of a few issues, and I really mean just a few issues, like five or so. And here we have the Captain America Bloodstone Hunt. This is uh, Epic Collection. I believe this is number 15. Yeah, 15. And it collects Captain America 351 to 371. This has a lot of the stuff by Kieran Dwyer, uh, written by all written by Mark Grunewald. And artwork by MD Bright, and I think Ron Lim even has some stuff in here. Just some 90s goodness in here. Stuff that has never really been collected in trade paperback. So, like I said, I'm a big fan of these epic collections, and I'm hoping Marvel releases more than one or two a year per character or per title. It's Crossbones, Diamondback, Red Skull. What else could you ask for in the 90s? I think there's a fight with Magneto. Team up between Magneto and Red Skull. I don't think this is the Axe of Vengeance story. This is something a little bit different. And is it really Magneto though? BPRD Hell on Earth Volume 2. And it's out of this dust jacket, much like the Ape Sapien is all black. Now, I've already heard of bad news about this one. It's not too terrible, but there is a missing page from the collected edition. I don't know how most of the people are going to fix that. I know that Dark Horse let out this big email letting people know there's a missing page from this. I'm not sure what page it is because I haven't read any of this yet. I got mine through InSock Trades, so they usually either let me send this back or they'll ship me another copy when the corrected edition is released. But just as a heads up, if you've got the first printing of this, there is a missing page in here somewhere. Now, this is a title I pushed on my friends. This is the Gotham City Sirens. I know the title says Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens, but I knew it as Gotham City Sirens. This was uh, released after Paul Dini, after Batman, rest in peace, and all that. This is what they, oh, man, that is pretty. And, yes, after Batman, rest in peace, and all that. That's when this was released. And it was written by Paul Dini from the animated series. Eventually it was taken over by Tony Bedard, but I've only read one or two issues of his stuff, and I don't know how his run ended up, but Gillian March is the reason to get this book, because the artwork is just phenomenal. I love his take on Poison Ivy, Harley Quinn. I think it's great, and Catwoman looks amazing. I love the flow of the panels. And it's not too terrible in price. It's $75 compared to 
150 or 100 dollars for some of these omnis but the paul dini stuff kind of wraps up i'm not like i said i'm not sure how the tony bedard stuff ends i only read a couple of his issues but here's some more of that gillian march artwork it's just completely gorgeous uh, i think it's completely gorgeous end up flipping through the whole book so i better stop and show you my final omnibus having a collector's mentality like i do and having a weak will is a horrible combination i am not a fan of colin bunn i have never read anything past the five issue miniseries that is in here but i ended up getting this hundred dollar omnibus or 125 dollar omnibus i'm sorry and let me show you what the dust without the dust jacket what it looks like clayton crane Okay, I will justify it by saying I'm a huge fan of Clayton Crane. I love his stuff on X-Force. But, past the miniseries, I've never read any of this stuff. This is some of his earlier work, so it doesn't justify how good he is. There we go, that's the stuff I'm kind of familiar with. The stuff from his X-Force run. I went in this with a blind buy based on what Riley Moore said from the Omnibus Collectors Group. He swears up and down that this is... An awesome introduction to Carnage. Now, I knew Carnage back when David Mitchell was writing him. And from the crossover Maximum Carnage, which is not included in this, by the way. It's included in the upcoming Venom vs. Spider-Man hardcover, which is just the stupidest way to collect it instead of doing a David Michelini and Mark Bagley omnibus focusing on that time period right after it left off with the Eric Larson omnibus. No, they decided to collect just that storyline in this stupid omnibus that I don't want to get because I know eventually that we will have a Michelinian Mark Bagley Omni. I can almost guarantee that. Almost. So, I have no words to say about this. I don't know if it's good. Don't be an idiot like me and blind purchase something that's $125 even at half off. That's kind of an expensive blind buy. But if you've got the money and you like Carnage, then go for it hell who the hell am i to tell you to stop yeah last time i think we saw carnage before the miniseries was when century ripped him in half no that was before the miniseries yeah so this ongoing series takes place after he gets ripped in half if i'm not mistaken oh clayton crane yay that's the reason i bought this well that was my haul for april of 2018 i did get another package but it's not in yet so i'll probably throw it into my may haul I would love to know what you guys ended up buying or what you regretted buying. Did you also buy the Carnage Omnibus based on what people said, like I did? If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. If this is your first time watching, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. I'm also going to do a overview of the X-Men Legion Quest hardcover if you're interested in that. That'll probably come out sometime this weekend, so keep an eye out on the channel. Don't forget to tune in to our weekly show every Thursday, and we're going to have a new segment. It's called Old Reader, New Reader, where I reread something that I haven't read in a long time and two of my friends get to read something for the very first time and we all share our opinions about set title. And I think the very first one we're going to go with is Infinity Gauntlet. So keep an eye on the Facebook page or Twitter messages to let you know when that's going to air. We're probably going to do a live airing of that. Again, this was Omar and thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.